Tonight, talent and development, or let me say talent development in South Africa and on the rest of the continent is a vital um, focus on our conversation. I'm personally invested in the development of talent through our Leadership 2020 company, which is a partner to, to this um, company. And I'm hire, I have hired a team of producers out there who have no background with me, even on my radio show, which is slash radio television show, but it's about empowering and grooming young talent because somebody once believed in me when I was young and it's very important or imperative for us to believe in the future of this continent. My guests tonight who share my passion um, will be helping me unpack this topic tonight. Um, Gareth Taylor, director um, at Awe Do Project, um, had a, an opportunity to do a little bit of work with them over the past couple of weeks. Sibani Mgomezulu, Group Executive, Human Resources, Strategy and Sustainability at Barlow World. And Hugo is the CEO of uh, Open Networks. On Skype with me, we have Pat Dambe, who's Vice President, Corporate Affairs and Government Relations, De Beers Global. Um, site holder sales. And starting with our guest on Skype, she's actually commuting. She's traveling between uh, African countries out there. Ospet, welcome to the show. Thank you. Very well. Now, I know you guys at De Beers are known to have empowered a lot of engineers and a lot of um, metallurgists, geologists, and so forth. Most of them I went to school with them. The issue of um, empower, empowerment. Yes. I mean, this is something different. You talk about geology which is really the upstream of our business. And now we're going into the downstream of our business in terms of the youth. We're looking at identifying potential to come into our pipeline uh, for jewelry design. And we created a jewelry design competition 20 years ago. Um, and we launched in Namibia. Botswana in 2008 and it it moves from uh, one of the countries um, three times uh, every year and this year we're holding it in Namibia so last night we had the media launch to basically launch the the program here in Namibia it's a very exciting opportunity for our youth to learn about what I think is probably the, the, the place where women want to be, which is amongst the diamond jewelry business, um, both here in Southern Africa and internationally. And what, what, what is the role that De Beers is playing in empowering a lot of uh, not only diamond dealers, but uh, makers and younger, smaller entrepreneurs? The Shining Light Awards, as we call it, which is the Design Jewelry Awards uh, competition, is an example of some of our initiatives that are focused specifically on the youth. Um, we are going around the three countries, South Africa, Namibia, and Botswana, identifying um, students from tertiary schools who would like to enter into a competition. In South Africa, we've just finished the tour in uh, Durban, in Pretoria, uh, in Cape Town. We're going to be in Johannesburg next week. We've had entries of about 150 in each place. The entries are open until November this year. And it's all about um, uh, uh, entering into what we consider potential. We're not necessarily looking for people who know how to design jewelry. Mm. You know, we're taking finite resort, a, a resource. I mean, we're talking about a billion year old stone that has to be designed into something that someone will buy for a loved one or to celebrate something that is of significance in terms of a life milestone. So the students are going to learn that whole process and they enter the competition and have to submit a 2D or 3D um, design, which is then um, judged by an international panel made up of South African, Namibian, and Botswana judges, as well as our international uh, um, uh, partnership uh, with, with De Beers Group um, in terms of Forevermark, which is our retail brand as a group. The winner of this competition gets to go to our design center in Milan in Italy for a year's experience and will compete amongst the best of the best and will hopefully join our pipeline um, as 
as one of our young youth. And the intention is to do this around the Southern African region so that we develop our youth into understanding. But how do, you, okay. how, do, how do these young people get in touch with you guys? How do they enter for the competition before I let you go? We have a website. It's www.shininglightsawards.com. And the whole entry process is there. It's very simple to follow. It'll tell you when we're in your area and when you can come and hear about the brief and enter into the competition. Thank you. So it's sh shininglightawards.com. Correct. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you for joining us and travel safely. Thank you. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Mgomezulu. You know we are previously um, disadvantaged as black people, especially on our continent. If you're looking at South Africa, white people own our land, white people own their means of economy. How are you guys changing this as a company? Well, we're all about, as Barlow World, inspiring a world of difference in the communities where we operate. So we've partnered with um, a group called Enactus, who are all about making a difference in the world by promoting entrepreneurship. We've realized that it's not all about seeking a job, but we need to find our leaders whilst they are still young in the education system and instill in them and bring out those fresh ideas that they have around promoting and growing entrepreneurship. So we take those young people, we, we, we support them, they come up with ideas, and Enactus is all about giving them a platform to put forward initiatives which partner with communities making a difference and we look at those people and those tertiary institutions that participate in Enactus, which by the way is a global initiative, we are able to benchmark ourselves as South Africa against those other tertiary institutions in the world and we're able to give our young leaders a platform to be socially responsible but as well as to put forward ideas which can make a difference in so the world. So around the motoring industry? Motoring industry, earth moving and mining equipment industry, agriculture industry, yeah. logistics, Barlow World Place and all that space. Beautiful. I mean, I love, I've been exposed to some of the wonderful work that our way to project has been doing. Luckily, fortunately for me, uh, but not a lot of people have. And I've seen how many young black people you guys have in your, in your programs. Can you unpack our way to project a little bit about, and, and the role you guys are playing in advancing? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we have two main products that we're working with. One is our investment fund and the other side is our business incubation program. Now, the talent development side, our focus for tonight, I think we're more uh, is slanted towards a business incubation program. There we've worked with 1,500 entrepreneurs over the last two, two to three years, um, developing them so that they are able to either start their own business if they don't have one yet, or being able to grow their business if they, wa if they have an existing business already. Uh, we have a six month program where uh, they, we pair them with a business coach and as well give them exposure to uh, like a micro business MBA to empower and uh, enable these individuals to go on to start and run successful businesses. What inspired you to, uh, to start our way to project? So, um, I, I didn't start it personally, Yusuf Randier Reese. So I, I mean, you guys, yeah. Yeah, cool. So, basically, the, the, the way to project, our mission is to use entrepreneurship to build the country we all want to live in. We see entrepreneurship as a powerful vehicle for social and economic change. Um, you mentioned earlier about previously disadvantaged and individuals not being able to own the economy and not being able to, as a result of our legacy, not having the, the networks, not having the education necessarily, not being able to compete on the same uh, page. So what we're trying to do here is saying, right guys, how do we make sure that there are uh, opportunities for individuals who have incredible talent, who just haven't had the ability or, or opportunity to go on and, and really shine? Um, so we provide that bridge, so to speak, with, with training, with coaching, uh, and through this whole, through our incubation process. It's beautiful. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those entrepreneurs that, are, that, are, that started small, and I'm still very small, but I'm growing um, every, every day. And I look at a lot of my peers that are running small businesses, and I look at the, the growth and the advancement of, of, of technology, and he will, you are one person that, can, you know, that, that, that has got a lot of insight as far as how can technology help entrepreneurs scale up without necessarily yeah. having to have um, the physical, um, or, or, or let, let me say, problems that we get to encounter small businesses in terms of staff and so forth. Yeah. Well, maybe if I just introduce my company, Open Networks. Of course, yeah. Um, we are a Google for Work premier partner. What does that mean? Um, I thought you might ask that. So yeah. our, our primary job is... Because I, I saw the Google for Work yeah. card downstairs and I was like, okay, this yeah. is interesting. What is this? Yeah. You know, most people think of Google as Google Search, Google Maps, Google Play. Um, Android, things like that. But there, there's a division of Google called Google for Work, which pr is a complete um, productivity suite from 
pretty much everything you need to, to run a business. Um, literally, whether you're a small business or a very, very large business. And the, the, it's a very interesting environment for in entrepreneurs because actually not having legacy systems where you've got um, systems that have been running for 20 years in a bank, for example, the fact that you don't have those and that you get to start with a, with a clean sheet um, as, as a new business, you, you actually end up with better systems. You can end up with better systems as a small, as a small business than, than, for example, some of the biggest companies in the country would have. Um, the, the advantage of that is that if, if you think about a, a big company trying to transition into the digital, the digital world, they have to change their culture, they have to change their legacy thinking. <coughs> Whereas the startup, he has a vision, um, he can access the, the most powerful tools in the world and just build, just build an app or build an application yeah. without thinking about you know, things like where, where would I run my servers. Um, so, so the entrepreneurs born into this generation are actually free of of the, the legacy restrictions of, um, of the larger companies. So Basi are, yeah. Basically, you know, what one has been able to notice or what he's saying is that you guys are, are born at the right time. I think we're at yeah. the right time. We're on the right continent right now. I think a lot of us are aware that uh, the Western world and the Chinese and everybody else is just coming onto our continent right now. So this is the right time. And a lot of you guys out there are innovative. So be more innovative and be more innovative driven in solving um, all the problems that are out there because entrepreneurship is very essential. Mr. Mgomazulu, you're at Balo World, you were trained some. Where were you trained? I studied at the University of Natal okay. uh, in Peter Maritzburg and then I moved to Johannesburg. In, in Donepaya, especially, you know, black young kids, when they get into uh, uh, um, even varsity, we're experiencing computers for the first time. And even when we do graduate, you find a lot of smart young kids, but they do not really get talent development from a, from a young age. Yes. And what is Balo World, um, you know, what is your take on, on, on what your company is doing? Well, we, Balo World has a specific focus around education because in inspiring a world of difference to, 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 to work with young people, we've seen that interventions in the education space so we've got various initiatives from early childhood development all the way through to tertiary education. But we've also understood that we need to partner with organizations that have the interests of the various sectors and understand the various sectors much better than we do. Mm. So we partner with various um, organizations in the different um, interventions that I've just mentioned. But Education and skills are key. Yeah, as, as much as they can be key though, there's a lot of inequalities that exist. I'll make you an example, like for instance, he, he's in technology and a lot of kids who are white, they get to matric level already and they're already yes. computer savvy and they're sure. very literate when it comes to, to that space as opposed to a black kid who's seen sure. the computer for the first time, you know? Absolutely. Well, in the industries in which we operate, we've got technical training. So we take people straight out of school, no background in, in, in the industries in which we operate, and we train them. In fact, we train for the various industries. A lot of people come and recruit from us, whether it's in the automotive space, yeah. or it's in the earth moving and mining space, or in the logistics space. We've got training academies in all our businesses, and it's all about giving people skills and giving them the opportunity to really operate where they may not have had an opportunity before. And how do you expose them? Like well, how, how you, because a lot of, of I yeah. find that a lot of problems in, in, in townships is the information. They're not aware of our way to project. They're not aware of the wonderful mm -hmm. work that you guys are doing. How do you guys get, uh, market your, 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 your services? I suppose, um, you know, if you're a player in the logistics space or you're studying logistics, you would get to know of the programs we have around technical training for our logistics business. If you were in construction or in earth moving, you'd get to understand that as well as in our automotive sectors or agriculture sectors. So I guess it's more specialized towards those industries in which we operate. We also have, you know, a, a program for training black chartered accountants. Okay. We, we, we put them through a program where we're an accredited institution to be able to do that. So we've got interventions at different levels in the organization. So they have to get into your website to find out more about what you They can get into the website and get okay. more information, yes. Balawal.com. Balawal.com. And uh, but see if, if I could interject, there, there's a strange irony to the situation and that is if you have 10 years experience in, in traditional IT, in fact, 
that, that can be a disadvantage because you've got 10 years exper experience and training and education on how not to think. Um, whereas a guy who gets access to a mobile device or a computer for the first time, he, he goes online and can, can discover a, a platform where he can build an application um, at zero cost that can scale you know, to millions of users without any capital investment, without buying servers. So, so there, there's, a, you know, there, there's a really interesting positive to the, to the knowledge that starting with a clean sheet in, in, you know, in 2016, mm. in fact, can give you a huge uh, advantage over your, your competitor. So yes, you don't have the capital as an entrepreneur, as a startup, um, but you've, you've got the advantage of, of being able to build a platform that can scale very quickly. You're not constrained by legacy thinking, legacy culture. Um, it, it's actually a very, it's a very exciting opportunity for entrepreneurs who are building um, applications. You guys doing some work with the government? Uh, we're not currently doing work with the government directly as a Google partner, but Google itself does work um, on a number of different levels, um, specifically um, Google Apps for Education um, is, is an area where Google does a lot of work um, in, in the education space. Um, and there they use a totally new way of, of, of interacting with students, um, a sort of real-time collaborative way of working with students. Um, so we've got students coming out of schools who are, again, born into this world, this world of cloud computing, yeah. um, where they don't understand constraints, which is fantastic because they don't need to understand constraints. Yeah. Um, you know, if we understand stories like um, Uber, for example, you know, we know that Uber was born by two guys standing on the side of the road in, in Paris saying, what is wrong with the taxi industry? And the problem with the taxi industry is, I never know if the taxi is going to come. So let's build an app tells me when the taxi is going to be there. And that's how Uber was, was born. Uh, I can guarantee they, they never st uh, stood on the side of the road and said, um, how are we going to buy a server to build this app? Mm. They never asked what devices the app was going to run on. They, they knew it would run on smartphones, and they knew they'd build it in the cloud, and they, they knew they could just tap straight into Google Maps or a mapping application. So, so th this incredible cloud infrastructure that exists for entrepreneurs to to tap into, um, it's the awareness of that that's all, that's all uh, that, that's the only gap between an entrepreneur utilizing it and 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 starting. And now our two project is a social entrepreneurship um, movement, what, which is obviously promoting social entrepreneurship. And and you guys have you know have had a, you have got relationships with um, some guys out there who can help your entrepreneurs. Have you had a group of um, guys that are that are, are willing to scale up small companies? Yes, yeah, so we, we're currently setting up um, relationships with, with corporates where those corporates were able to set up investment funds that are able to invest in, uh, in businesses, especially in supply chains in those corporates. So on that side, we are setting up relationships there. You asked Huel about a relationship with the government. We have a relationship with the Jobs Fund, who is a partner with us on our incubation program, enabling us to, to work with these 1,500 to 2,000 entrepreneurs. Um, and we've been partnering with them for the last three, three to four years as well. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of work, and obviously in this space, the, the better you can interact and um, uh, get the right stakeholders on board, get the right partners on board, the more you're able to multiply your impact. Um, so that's obviously something that we're constantly looking at. Um, partnering with potential funders, making sure that we know what they're looking for from these uh, entrepreneurs and from their businesses, what's exciting for them. And then from there, we can work with the entrepreneurs to make sure that they're ready for that funding, that their businesses are in a position they can uh, take on that funding and continue to grow. Then you've got entrepreneurs, you, you know, you've, you've got a, a lot of professionals like, like yourself, sir, who are, are very highly experienced in, in corporate, who are, have got the knowledge from, you know, um, being in education and so forth, or being educated. But I find that a lot of my friends who are professionals in the corporate are afraid to take that leap of faith and go start their own businesses, especially with social entrepreneurship being the big word right now, businesses that can, you know, help people yes. on the ground. Would you jump on that leap of faith? You got a family, you got bills. Yeah, look, it's all about support. Big business has to come to the party. And as Bala World or as big business, we have to assist young entrepreneurs by helping them to take that, by giving them a year's contract, for example, and saying, we will support you, we will help you build capacity, we will help you pay your bills, so to speak, as long as you are 
coming on board, learning what it is that needs to be done and growing in a sustainable manner. That's what big business needs to do to be able to assist young entrepreneurs across the different but sectors. But are they doing it though? Because a lot of big businesses don't. Well, the, 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 the government has facilitated now a regulatory environment that encourages big business to do that. So it's, it, the, the, the take up hasn't been as, as, as good as it should have been, but yeah. it's certainly starting. I mean, it's all about giving young entrepreneurs business opportunities, contracts in the supply chain, big businesses, <coughs> huge supply chains. That's where we need to bring in our young entrepreneurs. But big business keeps benefiting on its own. I mean, you've got policies like the BE that didn't work, and you've yes. got your triple PM FMAs that are not benefiting small business for more black businesses. They keep benefiting you guys. It has to be a win-win. It can't be a win for one party and not the other. Business wins if we can get reliable supply, quality, and you know reliability from suppliers. That whether it's, it's a black supplier or uh, an established supplier who's been in business for many years. So it's all about building capacity. If you're able to build capacity, business wants to do that because they get points for it in terms of BE legislation. It's all about making it a win-win. We need sustainable, reliable supply and build supplies because at the end of the day, if we're operating in an econ economy like South Africa's where you get credit and recognition for working with black business, all business wants that. Very interesting. I had a chat with uh, a mentor of mine the other day and he said to me, or what the country, or, or what the, the NC government should have done was um, to go to where policy is and where it says white, you go black. Where it goes black, you go white. That's where you can reverse what has been <laughs> happening in this country. Now, being having an experience of working on the ground, being with mm -hmm. entrepreneurs on a daily basis and seeing the problems um, that the policies and the rules and regulations of this country has had, um, uh, uh, has had, uh, sorry, the impact that the negative impact it has had on, on the problems that our small businesses are encountering. What would you say, which policy would you change to make government do better, um, do entrepreneurs better? So I think, as we said earlier, the government has done a huge amount of work with regards to the policies that have been in place that enable us as a business to make sure that we are bringing about the transformation that is required. I mean, Sabani was saying just now about a win-win situation. Now, uh, we're pioneering the investment fund that I spoke about earlier, where yeah. we're working with these big corporates to say, right, there are three parties in this. There are the black industrialists or high potential of black entrepreneurs. There are the corporates themselves who need to be transforming their businesses. And they're the businesses in that supply chain as well. How do we make sure that there's a win-win situation for all of those? Because at the end of the day, business is about capitalism as well, and it's its bottom line. So what we've said is, right, okay, so for big corporate, you need to transform your supply chain, you need to get preferential procurement, you need to get enterprise and supply development and all those things done. Let's set up an investment fund with you where we will try and where we, will, where we will identify the top businesses in your supply chain that are currently white owned, that if they became black owned, would be able to uh, change the points of the preferential procurement and be able to, to solve that problem for you. Then we have the white, white business owners who have been in business for 20, 30 years, but they don't just want to give their business away. They want to leave a legacy. They want to make sure they want to be part of the transformation, but they also want to receive something for something that they've been building for like 20, 30 years. So that's where we can come in with from an equity perspective. We have an offtake agreement with the corporate. Uh, and as a result from that, we then go and we find, you were speaking about the, the black entrepreneurs or black businessmen who want to make that jump across into entrepreneurship. So we say, right, we want to find you. We want to bring you guys into these businesses with a view of you being able to earn into equity or being able to raise equity in the future. And as a result, that's the transformation plan that we have. Very interesting. It can be a topic for the whole evening. I'd love for oh, us to... If, if I could just yeah, put just a, come a, in a and second point. Your, if there's one thing that we would like to see the government do, and that is change the, the landscape of connectivity. Mm. Yeah, access, access to internet um, in our view, is something that would, um, across all racial, you know, it has no racial barriers, yeah. it has no size barriers in terms of a corporate. Can make a um, huge difference. Simple, the ability to connect to the internet. I've seen is, more, uh, I've seen more students hanging out in Bramfontein, and I've seen the culture of not only entertainment and lifestyle for young people move from just Bramfontein to Pretoria now because of the free yeah. Wi-Fi. Mm. So I definitely agree with you. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me. Uh, uh, transformation is another topic that we can have on a different day. But I, I would also love to say, instead of us having to own white, previously white-owned companies and wanting to get share there, I think the government should do more in helping people like us who are starting their own black businesses from scratch.
and it's beautiful that technology allows us um, those types of opportunities exactly as you were saying so thank you so much for coming to join us gentlemen i uh, always you. get to learn when i hang out with these type of guys you guys know i'm just an unstructured entrepreneur from the street out there from the entertainment industry and for me to get opportunity, an opportunity to come sit with these guys and have these discussions i'd not only learn but i'm happy that you guys get to watch as young entrepreneurs out there and listen to what these guys have to share so it's very important for you guys to look at their names google them find out more information about their company so you can also get help um, within your company as well.